Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness of Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 20 of 2019 restructuring the Engineering Professions Practice Board. It will be chaired by Engineer Maryam Ahmed Jum'an and the following engineer members. Abdul Majid Hamid, Hamid, Habib Abdul Karim as Deputy Chairman, Ghazi Saeed Al Saleh, Shahrayan Ahmed Sharif, Thamar Muhammad Salah, Dean Abdul Nabi Abdullah Sabah, Isa Ali Janahi, Ruwaya Khalif Al Mannai, and Nawal Yusuf Al Ammadi as members for a duration of three years renewable for similar periods. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 21 of 2019, restructuring the National Anti-Smoking Anti-Tobacco Production Committee. It will be chaired by the Minister of Health and will include the following members. Dr. Maryam Ibrahim al Hajri, representative from the Health Ministry. Sayyid Kaldam, representative from the Industry of C Commerce and Tourism Ministry. Amina Hamad al Ramehi, representative of the Supreme Council for the Environment. Amani Khamis al-Dosiri, representative of the Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry. Jasim Mohammed al-Harban, representative of the Ministry of Education. Abdul Karim Ali Abdul Karim, representative of Customs Affairs at the Interior Ministry. Qais Hassan al-Dosiri, representative of the Ministry of Information Affairs. Nawar Abdullah al-Mutawa, representative of the Youth and Sports Ministry. Majid Bakri Yasin, representative of the Anti-Smoking Society and the duration of their membership will be three years renewable. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 22 of 2019, renaming the administrative body and the Minister concerned with youth and sports bodies and athletic activities. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, led by its minister, has been designated as the administrative authority in charge of youth, sports bodies and athletic activities stipulated in the Law of Society's Social and Cultural Clubs issued by Law Decree 21 of 1989. The Ministry will assume its jurisdictions as stipulated in the law. His Royal Highness our Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Dhabiya Palace the Chairman of the Bahrain Bar Society Board of Directors Hassan Ahmed Bdaywi and the Society's members who expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness on his continuous support to the Society. His Royal Highness praised the role of Bahraini lawyers in supporting the march of the kingdom through their contributions. He stressed the government's support to law profession for its novel goals in protecting rights and protecting the law. His Royal Highness praised the role of the society in maintaining their noble values and wished them all success in assuming their duties. He affirmed his keenness to communicate with the society's board of directors and listen to them directly to overcome all challenges. Abdewi expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to the society, which motivates its members to exert more efforts to achieve justice and legal development. He praised the confidence of His Royal Highness and the society to assume its responsibility and praised His Royal Highness's keenness in communication with the Bahrain society and meeting their needs and aspirations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized his advisor Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend in Indonesia's celebration of Independence Day hosted by its ambassador to Bahrain Nur Siyare Ruhardu. President of Bahrain Basketball Association Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa and a number of senior officials were present. Sheikh Salman extended the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and wishes of further progress and prosperity to Indonesia's leadership and people. 
His Royal Highness asserted the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and Indonesia in all fields, adding that the kingdom is keen on developing bilateral ties to meet the two countries' mutual aspirations. Indonesia's ambassador to Bahrain expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support to developing relations between the two friendly countries, lauding Bahrain's progress and prosperity in various fields. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainan, met with the Kazakhstan Speaker, Nurlan Nigmatulin, on the sidelines of her participation in Eurasian parliamentary meetings in the presence of Bahrain's non-resident ambassador to Kazakhstan, Dr. Ibrahim Abdullah. Zainal praised the friendship ties and cooperation in the diplomatic, economic and cultural fields and affirmed Bahrain's keenness on bolstering the bilateral parliamentary cooperation. The Kazakhstani speaker expressed admiration of Bahrain's outstanding democratic reforms and humanitarian initiatives, resulting in the state of the institutions and law, boosting transparency and public freedoms in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended today the final ceremony for the Community Partnership Conference for Combating Narcotics. The three-day event attracted participants from GCC countries, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Drug Addiction Treatment and Precaution Centers, along with experts from inside and outside Bahrain. يسعدني حضوركم اليوم وبداية ودي أن أشيد القائمين على هذا المؤتمر في الواقع أن نحن نجتمع في إطار الجهود المبذولة لمكافحة المخدرات وما في شك أن هذا تحدي يؤثر على أمننا الاجتماعي وعلى أمننا 
الداخلي بشكل عام ولكن ما أريد أن أقول بأننا نتطلع إلى تعاون الجميع لإدراك خطر هذا التحدي وأننا بإذن الله من خلال تعاونكم مصممين نجعل من البحرين من البلدان الرائدة في مكافحة المخدرات وهذا يعتمد على تعاون الجميع فالفئة المستهدفة هي فئة الشباب والبلد بحاجة إلى طاقتهم احنا عندنا قضايا اكبر نحتاج ان نتعامل معاها من خلال جبهه فاعله متعلم حاضر ولذلك احنا باذن الله واعيين لهذه الخطوره ولاستهداف هذه الفئه المخدرات من خلال طرقها الغير قانونية تجد طريقها ولكني آمل أن يكون هذا الطريق طريق مسدود مسدود بالقناعة بالرفض وهذه هي مهمتنا كيف ممكن أن نحصل على هذه القناعة عند الفئة المستهدفة سنحقق ذلك بإذن الله من خلال هذه الجهود هذا المؤتمر اليوم هو أحد الجهود الرسمية المبذولة ولكن المهمة أشمل إنما هي مهمة مستمرة فإحنا بإذن الله راح نستمر في التعامل معها ونراهن على وعي الشباب وادراكهم وتعاونهم ونسال الله التوفيق ان شاء الله شكرا يا اخوان Director General of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science, Brigadier Abdelaziz Ramehi, asserted that for the second consecutive year, experts gathered to discuss narcotics fighting methods and set national plans to reduce supplies and demands, along with the focus on the role of treatment and the support of the specialized rehabilitation centers. He asserted the need for continuous assistance for recovered addicts or those who want to quit drugs, as well as ongoing efforts to integrate them into society. Meanwhile, the Regional Directorate of the UNODC, Hatem Ali, conveyed the greetings of the UNODC Executive Director, Yuri Fedotov. He said that such conferences represent a platform to exchange views, policies and strategies on the risks of illicit drugs and the means of preventing them. The conference included a documentary showcasing the achievements of the goals of the National Anti-Drug and Psychotropic Substances plans that were launched by the Interior Minister and Head of the National Anti-Drug Committee on June 25, 2015. After that, the recommendations of the conference were announced. At the end of the event, the Interior Minister honored the Supreme Committee of the conference, sponsors, speakers, heads of sessions, the participating teams and distinguished employees of the Anti-Narcotics Directorate. He held the efforts to achieve success for the conference and wished all the best in serving the nation.
On the sidelines of the conference, a delegation from the GCC countries participating in the conference visited the Bahrain Police History Exhibition organized by the Ministry of Interior on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Bahrain Police. The GCC delegation was briefed on the exhibition which highlighted the most important stages of history of the Bahrain Police and its outstanding record in the field of maintaining security and stability and the protection of public safety, in addition to the stages of its development over extended periods of time. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the President of the United States, Donald Trump, alongside with their participation to his appreciation to his efforts in strengthening the historical and strategic relationships between the two countries and people, wishing him further success. This came when the minister attended the reception ceremony held by President Trump to leaders and heads of delegations of world countries participating in the 74th session of UNGA. The minister expressed Bahrain's pride in its strong relationship with the U.S., commending its efforts in supporting the international community and facing the threats and challenges of the world and to consolidate international peace and security. The Foreign Affairs Minister also participated in the meeting of the Foreign Ministers of GCC states, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq and the U.S. The meeting was held in New York in the presence of U.S. President Donald Trump. They discussed the most important developments on the regional and international arenas and ways of strengthening partnership and coordination on various issues. It also looked in how to confront Iran's policies, support Iraq's security, and address all the challenges facing the countries of the region, in addition to discussing the Middle East Strategic Alliance. The minister affirmed that this meeting is part of the continuous efforts to achieve peace and security in the region through cooperation and collective action in order to overcome all challenges and address any practices that may threaten the security and stability of the region. He held the U.S. policy and its commitment to peace and security in the Middle East, as well as its keenness on strengthening cooperation with allies. The minister also participated in the consultative meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States at the ministerial level held in New York on the sidelines of the 74th session of the UNGA. The meeting discussed the latest developments in the Arab region and the meetings and consultations held during the UN General Assembly. In light of the statements and resolutions issued by the Ordinary Summit of Tunisia and Mecca, in addition to the latest decisions taken by the Council at the ministerial level at its previous meeting held in Cairo on September 10, 2019. It also reviewed the terrorist attack on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia and Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, as well as the Palestinian issue. A statement was issued following the consultative meeting of the Arab League Council at ministerial level which condemned the terrorist sabotaging attack on oil facilities in Saudi Arabia. It described the attack as a threat to international peace and security and energy supplies. The Council expressed consolidation with Saudi Arabia against all that targets its peace and stability, affirming its support to all measures taken by the Kingdom to preserve its security. The Council also condemned the attacks on oil tankers and commercial vessels in the Arabian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman, including the attack that took place on May 12, 2019, on two Saudi oil tankers, a Norwegian oil tanker and an Emirati ship, in the territorial waters of the UAE, as well as the attack on two oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman on June 13, 2019. The Council reiterated its call mentioned in Resolution 8412 on September 10, 2019 to the Security Council to shoulder its responsibility in guaranteeing the safety of maritime navigation, ensuring the security of the region and facing all threats that target the safety of navigation in the region. The Council also stressed that all relations of cooperation between the Arab states and Iran must be based on the principles of good neighborliness and not interfering in the internal affairs of Arab states as well as refraining from the use of force or threats. It also called for de-escalation and collective action to overcome the crisis in the Arabian Gulf. It also commanded once condemned once again the Iranian interferences and the internal affairs of Arab states as mentioned in the Arab League Ministerial Council Resolution 8418 issued on September 10, 2019. 
Regarding the Palestinian issue, the Council stressed the importance of implementing the recent resolutions, resolutions of the League Council and the ministerial statement, which was issued following the extraordinary emergency session of the Legal Council, League Council, which included addressing in international forums the legal statements of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu regarding the an annexation of parts of the West Bank and the shores of the Dead Sea in case he won the elections. The Council also stressed the need to intensify efforts to renew the mandate of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Refugees in the Near East by a majority for an, the next three years, stressing the need to work to fill the financial deficit estimated, by, estimated at $120 million. It also called for addressing Israeli settlement plans in the city of Jerusalem, especially in the wake of the U.S. decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, calling for the implementation of the relevant UN resolutions, including Resolution 2334. In the same context, the Council stressed the importance of ending the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem, in accordance with the two-state solution and based on international law and the Arab Peace Initiative. It also called for supporting the resolutions on the Palestinian issue in the General Assembly and the establishment of a sovereign and independent Palestinian state on the borders of June 4, 1967, with Jerusalem as its capital. Regarding the establishment of a nuclear weapon free zone and other weapons of mass destruction to be held next November, the statement stressed that the complete elimination of nuclear weapons is vital for the achievement of regional and international peace and security. The minister also participated in the ministerial conference to support the Yemen humanitarian response plan and alleviate the suffering of the Yemeni people held in New York at the invitation of Saudi Arabia, of the United States and the United Nations. They discussed the humanitarian situation in Yemen and means of helping the Yemeni people overcome their situation as well as exchange views on pos pos provision of resources for the humanitarian response plan and mobilizing donor resources. Saudi Arabia signed a humanitarian funding agreement with the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in the presence of the Secu Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the opening of the exhibition on the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's efforts in supporting refugees around the world, which was held at the United Nations headquarters in New York and organized by the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center and the Saudi Development and Reconstruction Program for Yemen. The minister expressed his deep appreciation for the relentless efforts exerted by Saudi Arabia in helping refugees, providing relief and humanitarian aid, and enhancing efforts to face conflicts and disputes around the world. He also highlighted how these efforts embody the kingdom's humanitarian role and reflect its keenness to harness its potential and resources in the service of humanitarian issues and to assist all countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in the opening session of the general debate of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly, which was held today in New York City in the presence of their Majesties, Highnesses, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, and high-level officials from member states and governments and non-government organizations. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, addressed the General Assembly and condemned the attack on oil facilities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, stressing that it is totally unacceptable. He also called for the need for international action to bring peace and sustainable development around the world and maintain the global economy. In regards to the Palestinian issue, he criticized the unilateral measures that threatened the two-state solution. He stressed the need to stop the arms race and external interference in the internal affairs of other countries. The president of the 74th session of the UNGA, Tijani Mohammed Bandir, reviewed the challenges facing the international community at this stage, most notably poverty eradication, terrorism, education, health promotion, job creation, better social welfare, climate change and mitigation, emphasizing the need for cooperation and action to eliminate these challenges. In his address to the UN General Assembly, U.S. President Donald Trump criticized what he described as corrupt regime in Iran, which rejects peace and follows a destructive strategy. He stressed that Iran continues to be a leading country in sponsoring terrorism as it ignites wars and conflicts in Syria and Yemen and dissipates the wealth of the Iranian people, restating the need, restating the need to prevent the Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. 
President Trump further added that the United States of America will continue to impose strict sanctions on Iran. Keynote speakers at the general debate of UNGA on its first day include President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah bin al-Hussein II, as well as a number of heads of state and heads of delegation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland, Jacek Zabotowicz, on the sidelines of 74th session of the UNGA in New York. The Minister of Foreign Affairs hailed the friendly relations between the two countries and their keenness to invest in all available opportunities to enhance the bilateral cooperation to serve the interests of the two countries in various fields. He highlighted the importance of communication between the two countries and advancing joint coordination on various issues of common concern. The Polish minister stressed that his country attaches great importance to strengthening relations with Bahrain, highlighting the progress and achievements of the kingdom in various fields. Information Affairs Minister, Bahrain Institute of Political Development Board of Trustees Chairman Ali Romehi praised the first Deputy Prime Minister Fellowship Program, which represents one of the pioneering and ambitious schemes initiated by His Royal Highness our Crown Prince to hone national youth cadres, develop their cognitive and leadership abilities, prepare them to participate actively in enhancing government's work on the basis of quality, creativity and innovation. Romehi expressed pride in the capabilities of young competencies and hailed their loyalty to the nation and allegiance to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, as well as their merit to assume administrative and executive positions in the government and private sectors. The minister urged the affiliates of the fellowship program to benefit from the opportunities and training programs to gain expertise and develop their practical and productive competencies, which would support the government action plan in accordance with the 2030 economic vision. The affiliates of the FDPM fellowship program expressed appreciation to the Information Affairs Minister for briefing them about the ministry's work, procedures, administrative, professional and technical development and encouraging them to further innovate and contribute efficiently to enhance the standard of government services and serving the nation and citizens. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the International Religious Freedom Roundtable signed an MOU with the center's activities on the sidelines of the 74th UNGA in New York. The MOU was signed by Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Center, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Chairman of the International Religious Freedom Roundtable, Greg Mitchell. The MOU aims to protect religious freedom and promote and establish international and regional roundtables of multiple religious freedoms in the MENA region and promote religious freedom, economic development, peace and prosperity worldwide. The King Hamad Global Center has opened a vast exhibition to showcase just how its citizens and residents coexist despite their different cultures and religions. More on this report with Sarah Lebrek. The United Nations headquarters in New York City saw the opening of the King Hamad Global Center and This is Bahrain exhibition. Present were the Board of Directors Chairman of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and a number of international delegates and humanitarians that toured the different parts of the exhibition to learn about the history and mission of the center and its supporting projects. Bahrain is very much involved with that culture of expression which holds the energy which is the soul energy of a people. It is the spiritual energy that we can walk in and out of the conscience of each other. And I am so proud that the kingdom exists because that is the cornerstone of a culture of a people that you rule through the tradition of a people and that is very important which is beyond the politics of the world and as a stakeholder here at the United Nations I am proud of you. The Kingdom of Bahrain declaration was written on the already existing foundation of Bahrain's ancestral rulers, a foundation that stems from the common sense that religious freedom is a fundamental right rooted in human dignity. Bahrain has for hundreds of years shed light on the importance of harmony in coexistence 
The announcement and presentation of the declaration is a global seal of advocacy for the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. Just seeing this declaration myself speaks to my heart because the king has been and his team has been able to bring out the human face of the crisis that we're having. If you've observed over the years that people are no longer becoming humans and the king has been able to conceptualize in simple English language without any element of hurtful word that ignorance is where our challenge is and that we should always see uh, the better part of ourselves and that in this planet that we exist in, we share a value that is much bigger than what we uh, selfishly explore. This is Sarah Brek reporting for Bahrain International. Information and e-government authority, Deputy Chief Executive e-Transformation, Dr. Zakaria Ahmed Al-Khaja, announced the launch of the government notification system Notify Me on the national portal Bahrain.bh. The new service offers Bahrainis, Bahraini residents and GCC citizens a central platform to automatically receive official notifications related to their government transactions via SMS and email and instead of by post. Dr. Al Khaja highlighted the importance of this national project and its role in raising communication efficiency between the government and public by keeping them securely and privately informed of their transactions. He noted that the launch is in line with the objectives of the coordinating committee chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. It is also among several projects and national initiatives that have the support of the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, which aim to develop and automate government services and offer them the highest levels of quality.